Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me today. As you saw in the thumbnail, I am doing an apple pie soap and it is amazing. It looks so realistic and I wanted to teach you how I made it. So grab your pen and paper and let's get started. First, we're going to prep our lye water. Um, you're gonna do that by doing 16 ounces of distilled water into a polypropylene container. That's the one with the number five underneath it. Um, you know, number five recycling code. Then we are going to practice safety. So we are going to get goggles, gloves, pants, long sleeve shirt, hair back, kids and pets in another room, a face shield if you need it, mask if you need it, just want to be safe. Next, we're going to pour 1.5 ounces of distilled water out of our original 16 ounces and we're going to pour it into a separate container. We're going to heat it up in bursts of 10, 15 seconds, and add two teaspoons of granulated sugar. Mix that up and place it to the side. We're gonna forget about it for a little while. All right, so next we are going to add the sodium hydroxide lye. This is where safety really matters. You're going to take another container that is completely dry and measure out 7.3 ounces of sodium hydroxide lye. And then you're going to take that container with the lye and slowly pour it into your remaining distilled water. I think it should be about 14.5 ounces at this point. And as you're pouring it in, slowly mix it. Um, it should be cloudy and it should start to get really hot. I think it gets between 180 degrees Fahrenheit to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. When it's all mixed and it's cloudy and it stops heating up, you know, you're checking it with your um, laser thermometer. You don't want to do any other type. Um, when it stops getting hotter and hotter and hotter, you know everything's been dissolved. You just let that cool, and I usually leave mine outside temporarily until it's ready. All right. Then, as you can see on the screen, my, the well, not mine, but the recipe I used popped up. Uh, and it has all the ingredients, the super fat level. It has the additives as well. So we're going to start with 16 ounces of coconut oil, which is going to make the bubbles in the recipe. You're going to rev reserve a few teaspoons of that coconut oil after you heat it up and then put it in. And um, we're going to use that to mix up our mica before we add the soap batter. So reserve the coconut oil and put that to the side. And then we are going to add 16 ounces of olive oil. Next, we're going to add 16 ounces of palm oil and two ounces of castor oil. In the pot of oil, you're going to add one big tablespoon of cowling clay and just mix it up with your spatula. Next, you're going to need two scent containers. Um, the recipe I made used an apple cinnamon, which was body safe, and then it also used a vanilla cake um, that I used to put in the crust. So first, we're gonna start with 
1.5 ounces of body safe apple cinnamon scented oil, plus two ounces of vanilla stabilizer. That'll keep it from turning brown throughout the whole soap. Then we need one tablespoon of Calen clay. Not only will it keep it light, but it'll also help it to bind the scent and um, that'll keep it smelling strong throughout the cure time. All right, so now you're going to grab the second container. This part's optional. Um, you don't have to add anything. You can just move on to the next step, but I like to make it a little more realistic. I add 0 0.5 ounces of vanilla cupcake scented oil. This will discolor the soap, so we will use it just on the brown crust. And um, then we're going to take some time to prep the mold. So coming up here, you're going to need a large piece of freezer paper or parchment paper. I used freezer paper. If you're using freezer paper, I recommend the shiny side up. That's against where the soap's going to go. And um, you're going to place the round mold over the freezer paper with the shiny side up. And just kind of draw a loose line around it so you can kind of get an idea of the size. Then cut it into a square around that circle. And you're going to save the rest of the paper. We're going to use it for the rest of this mold. Fold the paper in half and try to line up the circle. And then once folded, um, kind of just sketch with a Sharpie along the four outer lines just to kind of get a good guide so you can see it when you start to cut. Cut out the circle and place it on the inside of the mold. If it fits, fantastic. If it doesn't, you can take it out, use it as a guide, and just draw something a little bigger and cut that out and use that. So I put my circle to the side and then with the remaining paper, I cut two long pieces of seven inch by three inch thick strips and um, I used them to line the sides and I did it really roughly. I didn't tape it down. I didn't do anything. I just very roughly just stuck it in there and as I added the soap batter, it kind of spread them out. Then, then I made sure to pull my sleeves down and put my gloves on again because I wasn't using gloves while I was making the paper mold um, or the paper cutout. And uh, I made sure they were all pulled down. Then I added two teaspoons of sodium lactate to the cooled lye water. Now, you want to prep your stick blender. Make sure the stick is on the blender portion or, you know, the um, machine portion very well. You don't want it falling off. You don't want it splashing anything. So just kind of once you put it in, just tap it a couple times to burp the blender and then lay it on its side because we're going to be pouring the lye water directly onto the stick. That's the safest way to do it. It prevents splashing. All right, so once all of the lye water's in, you're going to alternate your mixing by hand and stick blending. Um, when you actually turn on the stick blender, you're going to put it on low and kind of do it in three or four pulses and then continue to stick blend by hand without it turned on. 
I absolutely hate this brand, this brand of stick blender because it has little ridges in it. So I take my lye water container once I pour all the lye water out and I fill it up with tap water and then I just leave it off to the side and I use that to actually soak my blender once I scrape all the soap off. So that's what I do and that's what I'm doing in the picture. All right, so coming up here, we are going to add the apple cinnamon scented oil. And um, I'm alternating the blending uh, between just using my hand and using the hand mixer on low, uh, the stick blender on low. All right, so next, once I pour all the soap out of the big square container into my little so, uh, side containers that I already prepped in my mica with coconut oil. Um, that's when I add in my, um, my vanilla cupcake scented oil to the brown one because it will discolor. The brown is just going to help it along a little bit extra and that's going to be the bottom crust. So if it does discolor, the brown will cover it up and make it a little more even. So in all the mica cups, I add a little bit of titanium dioxide, the mica, the coconut oil, and then I go through and add the sugar water to each color blend and I mix it up a little bit more because that's going to help the soap get hard. And I mix up everything just to emulsion. And then once it is inside the color, I go ahead and stick blend it a little bit more because I want to make it a thicker layer. This isn't something you normally do if you're going to do a swirl type of soap. I want big, chunky colors. I want this pie to represent like, instead of having sweet little swirls, I want to have like a chunk of brown on the bottom. And then I want to have like the um, kind of pinkish color going through with like strips and chunks of yellow to kind of resemble apples. So I want this to be almost a very thick and messy soap on the inside because I want it to resemble like chunks of apple inside of a like a gooey pie mix with a thick crust on the bottom. Normally you wouldn't stir it up this much. This is kind of like going backwards, but we achieve our goal at the end. All right, so I have two piping bags that I'm going to be working with. And um, one has an open star tip, and that's a larger size. It's usually used in commercial kitchens. And one is the standard Wilton size. Um, I believe it was a number 47. I will, I have a bunch of notes here I'm going through. So bear with me if I'm not keeping up. 
Um, but yeah, so one is going to be used to make the big whipped cream dollop. Uh, and one's going to be used to be making a basket weave. So um, right now, we I have the extra large star tip uh, in a large bag. And um, I'm just going to be placing my whole uh, piping bag into a jar. I found it's the easiest way to do it if I want to add icing or like, you know, cake batter or soap batter, you know, into a piping bag because then I don't need to hold it with one hand and scoop it with another hand. I just have something holding it and I don't have to worry about spilling it or dropping it, especially with soap. It's very slippery and there's lye in there and it gets hot and it, it just you have a designated jar that's going to be used to fill up your piping bags and it will make you so happy. All right. So this one here is my piping bag filler upper jar. <laughs> That's my designated jar. All right. So um, I fill up the star tip with the white icing. And then I go back and make my other piping bag. And that one's going to have the Wilton number 47. Um, it's a smaller size. And that one is going to have the basket weave tip on. I don't expect this to be an amazing basket weave. I'm going to cover it up with apples and whipped cream soap anyway. So I just want it under there to kind of give the illusion if it does peek through. But I end up covering the whole thing with apples anyway, so it doesn't matter. So after I did um, my basket weave and after I did my whipped cream, I went ahead and I drizzled the mica all over everything. And what I did is I take mica and I mix it with 91% alcohol until it's, it's a little bit thicker. I don't like a, a thin drizzle or you don't get the nice appearance. So I made a little thicker and this is almost like a, a brown cinnamon gold color. And I used it to drizzle it all over to resemble, you know, the, the brown sugar kind of like cinnamon appearance that's in an apple pie. And it made a world of difference. It really made it look realistic. It added depth to this pie soap. So when it came to the end beds on the apple pie, what I did is I took, um, so I don't know what they're called. Uh, I think it's like half of a spear mold. Um, they are really, really popular when you're making cocoa, hot cocoa bombs, you know, the, the spear. So I took the silicone spear molds and I just poured like two different shades. I did like a gala colored or a gala colored or, you know, like it's a little pinkish color. Um, in a couple molds. And then I also poured the perfect cooked apple color. I don't know how I made it, but I did. And it was gorgeous. But, um, so I made a couple of those. So it had depth because I wanted this pie to look realistic. So I used a Shea Melt and Pour to make the apple embeds. And once they were ready and solid, I went ahead and I sliced them up. I did my basket weave across the top. I kind of popped them in there and uh, then I went over everything with a little more mica alcohol again and then I covered everything up with the whipped cream soap. Then I cut more apple embeds and this is where I actually created a little bit of a darker brown kind of mica alcohol color and I rubbed my embeds in it and it gave it a cooked appearance. Um, and then I just kind of placed those decorat decoratively along the top of the pie. Um, and that one is what came out, what really made the pie look good. Um, then I drizzled a little more mica alcohol on top and um, it was just really, really coming together. And then once all of the apple slices were on there and uh, once everything was ready, I left it to the side for, I believe I left it for 18 to 24 hours to let it really harden up. It popped right out of the mold. It was beautiful. And then when I took it off, it just looked gorgeous. And I cut it in half. I measured it out. I had everything ready. And uh, 
it just came out so beautiful. And inside isn't super realistic, but I mean, it is soap. The top is gorgeous. Um, you do get the apple appearance where you have the yellow apple slices inside of that like pinkish yellow color and then the brown bottom and the brown top and the whipped cream. Um, what I did notice was I didn't like how light it was. So I took a little alcohol and mica mix and I painted the brown color on the crust part. And when I did that, it really, really brought everything to life. It really made it come together. So that was the final result. I just went over it with a little more mica mix and, and let it sit. And it, it just looks so gorgeous that I wanted to share it with you. So I hope this information was helpful. Please like, subscribe, follow, comment, all that stuff. If you have friends that like soap and art, artisan soap and artistic things, please share my channel with them. I really appreciate all the new subscribers. I appreciate everyone who stuck with me. Um, since the beginning. It hasn't been that long, but the channel is growing slowly and I really appreciate everyone so much. Don't be afraid to ask me any questions or leave any comments. I will answer them all. Thanks so much. Have a great day. And once again, I appreciate you. Please, please, please subscribe. Have a good one. Bye.